Hi everyone and welcome to lesson 5.1 on reproduction. Before we start today's lesson, I would like to review some of the key vocabularies. Um, the first word is meiosis. The second word is ed. Of course, ed is not really a new word, but um, in, in this chapter you will see the word ova or ova a lot. Basically, ovum is a singular form of an egg. Since we are talking about one egg, you will use the word ova. And if you're talking about many eggs, you will use the word ova. Sperms, of course, is not um, a new word to you. Gamete, however, is. And um, you will see in this lesson what that means. Haploid, diploid, and somatic cells. So this is a very short list. Um, more of the words will be introduced as we go into the lesson. But the few basics that I want you to know to spell and pronounce is meiosis, ova, ovum, sperms, gametes, haploid, diploid, and somatic cells. So let's talk about gametes. Gametes are also referred to as sex cells, and they are two sets of sex cells in humans. In males, they are called sperms, and in females, they are called ova or egg. So in males, the sperms are produced in the testes, whereas the ova or egg is produced in the ovaries. So let's look at um, anatomy or um, just a diagram of the male and female reproductive structure. So the first one here, as you can see, these structures that are located at the bottom there, they're very circular, they um, are responsible for sperm production. So here's where actually sperms are made. And in females, they have two circular structures on each side. They are the ovaries, and there is where ova or eggs over uh, eggs are produced. If you look at the size of a sperm cell and you compare that with an egg cell, you will also notice that the egg cell is hundreds of times larger than the sperm cell. And we will find out the reason why. Um, it is said that in females, the eggs or the ova are the largest cell in their body. So again, the sperm is very, very small when compared to the egg. Together, if you want to use, um, you don't want to say sperms and eggs, you can use the word gametes. And gametes are sex cells. They're very different from our body cells. And we will find out why in our next few slides. So how are sex cells different from our normal body cell? Um, our sex cell or gametes are different from our body cell. And the word we use for our body cells are somatic cells. So somatic cells um, are from all of our bodies. They are in our face and our heart and our liver. And every single part of our body have these somatic cells. And these cells have a nucleus, of course. And in the nucleus, you could find chromosomes. Uh, chromosomes are from in the nucleus. Chromosomes are basically um, segments of genes. Sorry, chromosomes are made up of segments of genes. And they contain our genetic information. So every single thing that is responsible for the traits we have, uh, for our characteristics, are held in the DNA. It's like a library that has all the source of information that allows us to be um, physically how we are and also structurally to make all of our organs and everything else. So those important recipes are held inside of our chromosome. So that is a very important part of the cell. So every single cell in your body have a copy of every single um, chromosome that you can find. However, each cell, whether it's a facial cell or it's a liver cell, only certain genes are activated to make um, facial tissues or um, liver tissues or whatever. So somatic cells or body cells, they have a complete set of chromosomes. Whenever you set a, a complete set of chromosomes, you are going to use the word diploid. So they have the full copy. Um, in humans, humans have 46 chromosomes. So every somatic cell, every single cell in your body have 46 chromosomes. Um, however, sperm cells and egg cells are different because they do not have 46. They have half of that amount. Um, if you're referring to half the amount of chromosomes, you're going to use the word haploid, H-A-P-L-O-I-D.
So sex cells are different from body cells in a way that sex cell contains half the amount of chromosomes. Somatic cells or body cells contain the full set of chromosomes. So why is this necessary? Why do we need our sex cells to have only half? Think about it. If we combine a sperm and an egg, and say for example they both have 46 chromosomes, then that will equal to a body cell or an embryo um, that will have, all the cells will have 92 cells. Now that cannot have, 92 chromosomes, sorry, and that cannot happen. Because when we have multiple copies of these chromosomes, it will cause an error because both might express themselves and we will have physical deformities. So this cannot happen. So what happened is that in our sperm and egg cells, we have 23 chromosomes each. And in that way, when they combine, they give you a total of 46. So review, I'm going to review the major um, things that you should take away from the slide, is that sex cells are different from body cells in that sex cell contains the full set of chromosomes called diploid. Sex cells have half the amount of chromosomes and they are referred to as haploid. So how exactly are um, sex cell or gametes formed? They're formed by this process called meiosis. So we're going to look at this process and it could be a little bit um, confusing, so please, please pay attention especially to this part. Let's start off with a single cell, which will turn into a sex cell. In that cell, we have our nucleus, of course, and we're going to use a different color to represent the chromosomes that are found inside. Now, the first thing that happens is that this cell, the nucleus will, the chromosome, sorry, will replicate. So let's draw our other cell. And when they replicate, they form pairs. So the stage between um, here and here is replication. R-E-P-L-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. So replication happens. And what you're seeing that is formed is two chromosomes that are attached to each other. And they are attached by something called a centromere, C-E-N-T-R-O-M-E-R-E. -E -E. So these two sister chromosomes, sorry, and I'm calling them sister chromosome because they are formed or they are exactly like each other, or they're copies of each other, are held together by what is called the centromere. And these two chromosomes are what is referred to as a homologous, H-O-M-O-L-O-G-O-U-S, homologous chromosome, C-H-R-O-M-O-S-O-M-E. So the question is, if we start off with 46 chromosomes and they, each of them is replicated, how much do we have in the, second, um, in the new cell? Uh, for those of you who are very good in math, you will say 92, which technically you are correct. We will have 92. However, because they are forming pairs, or they're attaching to each other, we still have 46. So the difference is, is that we started off with 46 single, and we end up with 46 double um, chromosomes. Or we started off with 46 chromosomes, and we end up with 46 homologous chromosomes. So let's see what the next step is. Now these sister chromosomes are homologous chromosomes because they are so close to each other. What will happen is that I'm going to use different color to represent them here to kind of understand. And I'm going to just color this in. So they are identical to each other and the purchase homologous chromosome. And they're held together by the centromere. 
So what will happen is that something called crossing over will happen. And crossing over basically means that, so what crossing over means is that a part of one chromosome will cut off and reattach to the, uh, the sister chromosome and then the same so crossing over, just to recap, is where the sister chromosome exchange parts of each other. So part of the one sister chromosome will um, cut off and attach to the second sister, and then the second sister will cut off and attach to the first sister. So I'm going to write that, and that happens here. Uh, I'm going to write the word crossing, C-R-O-S-S-I-N, so crossing over. So why does this happen? Why does crossing over happen? Basically, crossing over happens because of genetic diversity. So, and this answers or will answer the question if you have, why is it that brothers and sisters don't look exactly alike if they have the same parents? Basically, because of crossing over. The genes are further mixed when the sister chromosome, um, the homologous chromosomes are in pair, and as a result, we have diversity, we have um, variation within siblings. And that's why um, brothers and sisters and sisters and sisters and brothers and brothers all looks very differently from each other because of crossing over. The next step that happens is that the homologous chromosomes are then going to pair or line up in the center of the cell. So we will have them line up like this. And once they're aligned, again, it's still 46, we will have this step. Sorry. I just have to redraw uh, this. Basically, they will divide. And you will have the cell cleave in the middle, middle and two nuclei uh, will form. So in this step, again, there is still 46 in each chromosome, um, in, each, in each pair. So you'll have 46 here and 46 here. However, you will have 46 single. You will not have 46 homologous. So we started off, again, let's, let's just recap this. We started off with 46 single chromosomes. They make a copy and we have 46 homologous pair. Then they divide and the single pairs divide into two um, cells, and we have 46. Each cell will then go about to divide to form two. That will form two, and this other cell will form two. And each cell that is formed now will have 46, sorry, 23 chromosomes inside. So with each set of division, you produce four daughter cells. And each four of the daughter cell will convert into, in the case of male, will convert into sperm. So you'll have four sperms, each having 23 chromosomes or the haploid amount. However, for females, um, only one develops into an egg. The rest, or the three remaining ones, are called polar bodies, and they're not functional. They're not used at all. They basically support the one um, functional, uh, functional egg. The three just disintegrates and disappear. So with each division, you will have four cells being formed, each having 23 chromosomes. For male, the, each one of them will develop into a sperm. In female, only one develops. Here's a better picture for you to look at. Um, here you have your single chromosome, which is 46. Here you have 46 homologous, which means that they're in pair. The homologous chromosomes, they are lined up and crossing over happens. And then these 46 pairs then split into two. And you will have 46 here, and you have 46 single chromosome. And then the 46 divides into two again, which is 23 and 23 there, 23 and 23. Um, basically, meiosis is divided into two steps. We have the meiosis one and meiosis two. 
Meiosis one is all about replication and crossing over and pairing up. Meiosis two is basically um, division, and that's how we result in an egg cell and a sperm cell having only a haploid amount of cell or half the amount of cell by this process called meiosis. So as I said before, we start off with 46, and in males, you will have four sperms, and in female, you will have only one ovum. The three that is formed are called polar bodies, and they're not functional. Only one develops into a mature egg. So let's try some problems. Um, here we will test your vocabulary and see if you understand the process. Um, a rat somatic cell contains 42 chromosomes. So if we know the meaning of somatic cell, we can easily solve or understand the first part. Somatic cell is our body cell. So a rat somatic cell contains 42 chromosomes. How many chromosomes are found in the rat ovum? So they're asking you ovum means egg. If we start off with 42, therefore, and this is the diploid, which is the full amount, we will have two haploid, and the haploid will have 21 chromosome each. So to answer this question, how many chromosomes are found in the rat ovum? The answer would be 21, which is half the amount of chromosomes. And it does make sense because if a rat ovum is combined with a rat sperm with 21 each, we will have a total of 42, which is the total amount of chromosomes that are found in rats. So um, one more thing I wanted to throw into this lesson right now is that each organism have a different amount of chromosomes, whereas humans have 46, rats contain 42, and other organisms have five or 200 or different, different numbers. So the numbers varies um, from one organism to the next. Let's work on another problem. If the two N of human are 46, what is the haploid number of cell? So in basic math, you would know that N plus N is equal to 2N. So what this is demonstrating is that we have an egg plus a sperm will give us the full number of chromosome. Then, we know the value of 2n, which is 46. Therefore, what is the number of haploid? It will be 23 plus 23. So, in the exam, they might ask you, um, n represents the haploid number of cells. How many chromosomes are found in the haploid number of cells, or in the n number of cells? and therefore n always is 23 in humans. So just as a final um, conclusion to all of this, I know it's a very long lesson, but it is so much and um, I'm sure you would get it done um, quickly. So basically after sperm and egg cells are divided by meiosis and you have 23 chromosomes, we have a cell, so say for example, this is a sperm with 23 chromosomes. That's not actually a sperm, it is a part of a sperm. So to become a fully mature sperm, it will have to uh, elongate where the head contains the nucleus and then it contains the tail and um, there are mitochondria in its body for movement and so forth. So the process from developing from where we left off to that is called spermatogenesis. It is the development of um, a haploid cell into a fully developed sperm. Similarly, for eggs, we have our chromosome number with 23 before it could develop into a fully mature egg, um, or an egg cell rather, not a fully mature egg, but an egg cell, it must go through the process of um, oogenesis. So for um, let me see if I have a vocabulary word there. No, so I'll just write it. Um, spermatogenesis, S-P-E-R-M-A-T-O-G-E-N-E-S-I-S. And for development of egg, it's called O-O-G-E-N-E-S-I-S, -E which is oogenesis. Together, if you just want to use one word, you can use the word gam gametogenesis, which represents all of, um, of the parts together.